a little bit of a technical difficulty, so I apologize that I'm starting this live a few minutes late. Uh, Facebook Live has changed their interface a little bit, and I wasn't aware of that. Um, now I am. So I got it figured out. I'm here. Yay. Um, if you are hopping on to watch, I would love it if you would just let me know that uh, you're here. Let me know that you're here and let me know that you can hear me. Um, I have a mic plugged in and so I just want to do a little mic check and see, make sure that people can hear me. Um, so today we're talking about integrating your shadow using dream work. Um, so before I get started with, uh, and I see that somebody's here live watching, please let me know that you're here so I can say hi to you. Um, and then also, will you let me know if you can hear me, please? I have a mic plugged in, and so I, um, it would be helpful to know if you can hear me. So before we get started with the content and with who I am and um, all of that fun stuff, I would love to know if you already work with your dreams. Um, just let me know what your dream work practice is. Maybe you've, you're sort of self-taught. Maybe you've taken some classes. Uh, maybe you've gone on a retreat. Just let me know what your experience is with working with your dreams. And then will you also let me know if you have any difficulty remembering your dreams? Oftentimes when I tell people that I do dream work, that's the first thing that I hear from them is that they uh, cannot remember their dreams and I want to help you. So if you're interested in dream work and uh, you feel kind of stuck um, as far as the availability to be able to use this magnificent tool for knowing your, your inner world um, because you can't remember your dreams, let me know and I can help you out with that. Okay, so who am I? I'm Julie Balderrama and uh, I am a practicing witch and uh, part of my practice involves many, many different things and f at the forefront of that is dream work. And I teach dream work and I actually call myself a dream life coach um, because dream work is very integral to my coaching practice. Um, for me, dream work bridges uh, the subconscious and the conscious. It bridges my sleeping life and my waking life. Um, I, you know, a lot of times people will ask me, what kind of dreams do you work with? Do you work with sleeping dreams or do you work with waking dreams like goals and visions? And I always say both. They're the same thing. So I really help, uh, especially people who are highly sensitive, who are empathic, who are intuitive, who are just coming into their gifts, um, begin to realize the connection between uh, dream work, what happens in your sleep, and um, how you want to create your life in the world. Uh, and that is really about stepping into your power as a creator. Um, okay, I see some folks on here. Will you let me know? Will somebody just type a comment and let me know? I can hear you. Um, I would really appreciate that. Um, otherwise, I think I'm going to go to my phone and just make sure um, that I can hear me. Let's see. Can I hear me? I see some folks yes, I can hear me. Okay. Know? Thank you. Um, all right. So let's get started. Let's dive in. I want to give you lots and lots of useful things that you can use today. For those of you who are watching the replay, please do let me know if you have a, a dream practice already, if you already work with your dreams and what that looks like. And also let me know if you have any difficulty remembering your dreams because I've got something for you. Um, I can help you out with that. So let's talk about shadow work first. So this whole uh, Facebook Live today is about using dream work for shadow work. And I'm guessing that most people who are in Marley's group know about shadow work. If you don't know what shadow work is, for me, shadow work is really about working with the subconscious or with, with the unconscious. Um, and we call that shadow work because we can't see it. We can't see what's in there. Uh, so, so a lot of people get sort of scared off by this idea of shadow work probably not anybody in here. I'm guessing people who are in here are, have already gone through their dark night of the soul and are very familiar with um, their shadow, maybe not every aspect of their shadow, but very familiar with shadow work. Um, and why is it important? Why do we want to embrace shadow work? Well, one of the reasons we want to embrace shadow work is because we want to come into wholeness. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day about, um, about these programs, these subconscious programs 
that tend to run our lives, right? So our uh, sensations, the sensations in our body, we make meaning of those sensations and we tell a story around those sensations. And that story might sound something like, I'm good or I'm bad. Or it might sound something like, I'm lovable or I'm not lovable or I'm safe or I'm not safe. And so sometimes these stories that we tell around these sensations in our bodies um, are limiting and they keep us uh, in a space of where we isolate or where we hide or where we don't speak up, we don't use our voice. Um, so that's all in the subconscious, all of those beliefs, all of those, uh, all of those programs. So I was talking to this friend of mine and we were pondering, you know, why, why do we create this meaning? And is it really possible for anyone? Um, all of this programming happens, you know, from zero to seven years old. Uh, is it really possible for anyone in this, in this world, in this human experience to come with in, no limiting thoughts whatsoever, to come out of childhood with no limiting thoughts whatsoever. Um, even with the best parents, the most enlightened parents, the parents who have done their work, um, we're still subject to, um, to society, right? We're still subject to our friends, we're still subject to other family members, to teachers, to culture, to the society. And so why? Why are we here um, to work with the subconscious to do shadow work. And I think it really just comes down to our whole journey, our whole purpose here in this, in this human experience is to find our way back to love, is to find our way um, back to our, our divine self, which I, which I think inherently is love. And that's the whole purpose of being human. And so we're always going to, we're always going to have shadow work available to give us the opportunity to love more, to love the entire human experience more. So, so why do shadow work? Well, because that's what we're here for. That's the human journey. And because uh, we want to journey, we want to take that path. We want to open our hearts to more love and to more wholeness and become a more um, complete um, human, have a divine being having a human experience. From a practical standpoint, why do we wanna do shadow work as well? Meaning like boots on the ground, why do we do shadow work? Well, again, um, these programs are really, so again, we have sensations in the body, we create stories around those sensations, and then from those, those stories and those sensations, we take action. So you imagine, just, you know, if you're taking action from a place of, I'm not loved, I'm not worthy, um, I have to hide, I have to isolate, I'm not safe, and we, take, we continue to take actions from that space, what are gonna be the results in our life, right? It's probably we're going to miss out on some opportunities to, for intimate relationships. We might uh, hide our gifts from the world and really, um, you know, um, not step into whatever empathic or intuitive or witchy gifts that we might have. We might um, not ever be able to fully come into financial power or financial health, right? So there's many, many practical aspects of why we would want to do shadow work as well. We want to know what is what are those programs that are sort of operating in the background that are creating the results in my life. So if there's any part of your life that you're not 100% totally and completely happy with, um, that is a result of these programs and a result of things hanging out in your subconscious and your shadow that you would want to work with. And here's the thing. I know that uh, within the spiritual world, a lot of us, um, and I'm, I'm a practicing Taoist as well, I call myself a Taoist witch, um, I know that, that being, allowing and accepting what is, um, is magical and it alleviates a lot of suffering. The other thing that I know is that one of the natural laws is that energy is, and that energy is always growing toward more life. We're never done on this journey. Yes, we can be completely accepting and loving of what is present in our lives. And 
we also have desire and desire for me is the creative impulse of God. So when I have a desire, I know that me having that desire was put there by source, by God, goddess, whatever, whatever uh, word you want to use. It is the creative impulse of God. It is not for me to say, uh, no, I shouldn't want that. When I have a desire, I know that it is divine and I know that it is my pathway. It's my opening toward more life and more love. And I know that shadow work is essential to being able to grow into that life and to grow into that love. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know what your experience with shadow work is. I'd love to hear your thoughts on shadow work and why we do shadow work. Um, let's have a conversation about it, right? Um, all right, so I do have notes if you see me looking down occasionally. I just want you to know that I do have notes and I wanna make sure that I say all of the things that I wanted to say. I'm glad I looked at my notes. Um, shadow work shows up too as resistance. So as I was saying, um, when we feel that creative impulse from God desire to grow into more life and to grow into more love, to come into more completeness and wholeness, we're always going to bump up against resistance. And resistance is um, you know, that, that thing that, that gets in our way to growing toward that more life. And we know that resistance is always there because you, you would already have the thing in your life that you're wanting to grow if it were not there. So let's speak in practical terms. Let's say that you want to um, develop your gifts. You want to develop your psychic gifts. If there were no resistance to developing your psychic gifts, you would have developed them already. So we know that there's something, some kind of social programming that's in there that is blocking you that you're resisting growing your psychic gifts. And hey, that makes total sense because, um, you know, having and displaying our psychic gifts for such a long time has been persecuted and is still persecuted to this day. So it makes total sense that there's some kind of programming in there, um, whether it's yours, which it probably is partly, or ancestral, like it's come down that ancestral line. Um, that tells us to be afraid and to be ashamed of our gifts, of our psychic gifts, right? Think of the words that we've used throughout society, throughout time, to shame the wise woman in all of us. Um, witch, slut, uh, crazy, um, all of these things, even when we call someone a dreamer, right? I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, my dad used to tell me that I was a dreamer and to get my head out of the clouds. Um, that to me is a devaluing of my feminine essence, my feminine power. And when I talk about feminine, I don't mean male uh, or female, I mean feminine. So we all have within us masculine and feminine power. So we can, all of us can be dreamers. Uh, one of my favorite songs is Imagine by John Lennon. And he says, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one, right? So there's all kinds of dreamers, male and female dreamers, and it is a feminine um, aspect to be a dreamer and to be emotional. That's another uh, word that is really used to silence us and really used to, um, to have us cut off and resist our own uh, emotions and our own power that resides there in our emotions. Lazy is another one because rest is a feminine aspect. Um, emotional, lazy, navel gazer. My personal <laughs> soapbox is woo woo, right? That, that word gets used a lot to describe these gifts that we have, our ability to be empathic, our ability to be intuitive, our ability to, to see things and hear things and know things that are not quantifiable and we and it's and it is it's it's witchy right and we've been calling it woo woo to sort of water it down and then of course there are lots of people who use that in a very derogatory term so there's tons of evidence that we could see right that it is not safe to be fully and completely um in alignment with our power especially our feminine power and so when you are asking to develop your psychic gifts, 
or anything, whether it's develop your psychic gifts, whether it is to make more money, become more financially healthy, whether it is to move into uh, deepening in your intimate relationship, anything, any desire that you have, right? There are stories and programs around, um, around that are blocking you, that, are, that you are resisting, that you're in resistance. Um, to realizing that desire. And if that weren't true, then you would already have it. So that's another reason to do shadow work so that we can clear out anything that is getting in our way of remembering that we are meant to grow into more life and more love, remembering that we are a co-creator with source. Okay. So that's why we would want to do shadow work. And um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about a dream I had and then I'm going to give you some practical steps to do some shadow work with your dreams and I'm going to use my dream as an example of how to do this. So again, if you're watching, please let me know that you're watching. If you're watching the replay later, please let me know that you're watching the replay later. I want to be able to reach out to you and to talk to you. Answer any questions that you might have. Yeah. Okay. So here's my dream. Um, let me give you some background information on my dream first, okay? Uh, last, not last weekend, but the weekend before, um, I took a workshop from a woman that I greatly admire and respect. And she'd been asking me to take this workshop for about two years. Um, and one of the reasons she wanted me to take this workshop is because she wanted me to be able to bring dream work to her, her audience, her group of people, right? And so I knew that this was going to be a whole new group of people that I was going to be able to, to talk to about dream work, about the magic of dream work. And I was super excited about this. So I went to the workshop and on the second day of the workshop, um, at the end of the day, we ended up playing something called the game. Now I have mixed really mixed feelings about games um, and especially games that are meant to reveal something about yourself. Um, and so I went into that game um, with a certain attitude of, I'm not going to understand this, I'm not going to get it, right? And by the end of the game, um, we definitely, all of us who played the game, um, were confronted with our shadow, absolutely confronted with our shadow, could not look away from it. Um, it was so blatantly obvious. Okay, so that's the background information on the dream. Here's the dream. So the woman whose workshop it was, her name's Elizabeth. Um, in the dream, I'm with Elizabeth and her entire staff, uh, which includes her husband. And, um, and it's just me with them. And Elizabeth is telling me, I'm so disappointed in you. I expected better of you. I expected... Um, I expected better of you and you're not going to be able to to teach this work and to teach my my people and in the dream that was just so crushing absolutely crushing so when I woke up I I, I, I mean it was like a nightmare right I woke up I was absolutely crushed I felt so terrible I felt so ashamed um, and I knew as I was coming to, into relationship with the dream, I, I recognized all of the feelings. So one of the questions that I asked myself is how do I feel in the dream and how do I feel about the dream? So I noted that. I, I noticed how crushed I felt in the dream. I noticed how ashamed I felt when I woke up. All right. So that's the dream and that's the dream that I'm going to be um, kind of walking you through to give you an example of how to do these steps um, to, to integrate your shadow using dream work. So we're going to use my dream as an example. Um, I'd love to know about a dream that you have. If you have a nightmare or a recurring dream or some kind of dream that sticks out to you that, that you've got real strong feelings about, um, put it in the comments and I'm happy to walk you through this particular process. So that's the dream that we're going to be working with, right? Um, and then, so the first step to this process uh, is to name it. So I told you when I woke up that I asked myself, how do I feel in the dream and how do I feel about the dream? So that, that's part of the naming process. 
I felt crushed. I felt ashamed. What was the issue? That's what we want to know. So naming the issue. For me, the issue in the dream is the sense of me being good enough, be, me being good enough to, to teach um, somebody else's group of people. Um, and then there's also an aspect of, um, of me getting something, understanding something, knowing something. Um, so she said, I'm so disappointed in you. I expected better from you. So there was a knowing in the game um, that I was beating myself up for, not knowing, not being able to see it. Do you ever feel like that when you kind of, that, that um, hindsight is twenty twenty? Maybe a relationship went, uh, it soured. And as you, as you look back, you say to yourself, you know, why didn't I see this? Why didn't I see this coming? Um, so there's lots and lots of examples that we can say, you know, why didn't I see it? Why couldn't I see it in the moment? So that was the issue for me was a sense of not being good enough, not being worthy, and then also not being smart enough, not knowing enough or not getting it, not seeing something. So that's the issue. And then the feelings around it for me um, were shame um, and, and worthiness, like a lack of worthiness, okay? So when you have your dream, go back to the scene of the crime. What is it about that dream? And by the way, there, was other, there were other aspects of this particular dream. That was the part that stood out to me the most. So I went back and I named it. I named the issue. For me, the issue in, this, in my particular dream um, was around my worthiness and around my ability to get something, to see something, to know something, right? So number one, name it name what the issue is and name how you feel about it or felt about it in the dream. So I felt shame and I felt uh, like I wasn't good enough. Okay. All right. The next part is that we want to claim it. So I woke up from that dream and I felt like shit. Honestly, I felt horrible when I woke up from that dream. So ask yourself when you feel horrible, what do you usually do? Most people, there's not a lot of people that say, you know what, I feel horrible. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to sit with that. Now, a lot of you in here probably do that because you probably have practices around that. But even people who have practices around that, even myself, it is difficult sometimes to be with such huge emotions like shame and feeling unsafe and feeling like you're not loved or feeling like you're going to be abandoned, right? So those are difficult emotions to sit with. So number two, claim it. T take it back. Know that it's yours. I had to, when I had that dream, I had to tell myself a few things so that I could claim it. After I named it, I had to tell myself a few things so I could claim it. I had to tell myself, you know what? I know 100% without a doubt that Elizabeth would never, ever say that to me. She would never say that to me. I can't tell you that she wouldn't think it. I don't know that for sure, but I know that she would never say it to me. So I knew that there was something there for me to look at and that I, if I was brave enough to claim it and to sit with these feelings, that I would find the medicine within. So a way to uh, claim um, you, what you're feeling in the dream and the issue in the dream, um, and you may have ways that you do this. Um, and so use whatever works for you. A technique that I use uh, quite a bit is Tara Brock's RAIN meditation. And RAIN stands for recognize, allow, um, investigate and nurture. So I recognized the feelings that I was feeling. I recognized the issue. I allowed it to be there without pushing it away, without trying to make it better, without trying to figure it out. I just let it be there. I noticed the sensations in my body. And once again, I didn't try to change them. I didn't try to figure them out. I I sat with them as if I were a loving parent. I sat with that part of myself that was feeling these uncomfortable situation, uh, sensations in my body 
and these uncomfortable emotions. So recognize, allow, investigate. After I recognized and after I allowed, then I investigated. Then I said, okay, what part of this feels familiar to me in waking life? Well, that was pretty obvious for me. It was about the game that we had played the night before and uh, my reaction to um, being confronted with my shadow. And so I got to do some investigation around the words disappointment and around the words uh, around this um, feeling of I expected you to do better. And one of the things that we can do in dream work, one of the ways to, to work with your dreams is to work with um, each character and situation as if it is an aspect of you. So I got to ask myself, in what ways am I disappointed with me? In what ways um, do I feel like I could have done better? And in what ways do those stories prevent me from learning, prevent me from showing up fully, prevent me from um, bringing my gifts into the world, prevent me from teaching or uh, showing up or um, bringing dream work to more people or even, even just being my authentic self in my relationships. So that was part of the investigation that I got to do with this particular dream. So the RAIN meditation is recognize, allow, investigate, and then N, nurture. What do I need right now? What do I need right now in this moment? How can I nurture myself? What is it that my, my hurting self needs in this moment? And sometimes it is, uh, sometimes the best way that we nurture ourselves is to pick ourselves back up and get back into the game, right? Um, get back out there and do better. Now that we know better, we do better. Sometimes that's it. And you got to watch that nurturing, right? Because sometimes the nurturing is a little slippery. And we say to ourselves, well, I'm going to nurture. I could have easily said I need to nurture myself and I'm not going to go back to the third day of this workshop because I feel like such shit. But for me, what I determined was the best way to nurture myself was to pick myself up and get back in the game. Get back in the game of love. Get back in the game of loving myself and of showing up fully and of being authentic and learning and making mistakes and doing it anyway and and failing and and being with myself in those moments yeah all right so that's the second step which is to claim it so fully claiming whatever the issue and whatever the feelings are in the dream the teaching the wisdom and the medicine and then the third step for shadow work is with using dream work is to reframe it reframe um, for me this particular step is all about alchemy it's about taking the raw material of the dream and uh, turning it into gold so this is the richness of it and by the way you can do this with waking life situations as well we're talking about this specifically with dream work with the dreams that you have when you're asleep and you can treat any waking life situation as if it is a dream and do the same process with it. Name it, name the issue, name the feelings, notice what the sensations are in your body, where is it in your body, what does it feel like? Claim it, um, be with it, witness it in a loving way, um, and then reframe it, do the dream alchemy. So what do I mean by reframe it? Well, there's a process by which you can actually re-enter your dreams, which is super healing and uh, transformational. Hi, Vicki, welcome. Um, this process of re-entering your dreams. And like I said, you can do this with waking life situations as well. You can go into meditation and you can re-enter a situation, which is actually what I ended up doing with this particular dream. I ended up going back into time through a meditation or a journey, if you'd like, and playing the game a different way, playing the game with what I knew now, right? So when you reframe your dream, when you want to re-enter your dream, you want to know where are you going back to in the dream? What moment in the dream do you want to go back to? This is a little bit like time travel. This is a little bit like, uh, I don't know if anyone, did anyone watch the show, um, was it Quantum Leap? 
this is a show in the 80s where he would like go back in time and like fix certain timelines that had um, that had gone off or had gone wrong or whatever. Um, so, so this is the same thing. We go back in time, go back into the dream or go back in, in time in waking life and pick a moment, pick the moment that you want to go back in time and begin to alter the timeline, begin to have this alchemy within the dream. So you want to know where you're going to in the dream and you want to know what is it that you want to do. So keeping the integrity of the dream, meaning keeping the, the circumstances fairly similar and only altering how you show up and the decisions that you make in the dream, um, you have a different outcome. It's the same in life, right? If I have different actions, if I take different actions, I have different outcomes. So let me give you an example. Um, I, for this particular dream, I didn't go back into the dream. I actually went back into the game, the, the, the waking life situation. And I decided that at the moment where um, I needed to understand something, that I would, that, that a veil would be lifted and I would see the game for what it was. So that's what I did and that I would make choices based on that, that knowingness for me, that, that moment of getting something of like the aha of like spirit coming in and, and clearing my third eye. So I got it. So that's what I did. You can go back into the dream. Let's say that you're being chased, right? Um, by an animal or by someone who's trying to kill you or, or any of those sort of typical dream nightmare uh, tropes. Um, you can choose to go back into the dream at a specific moment and maybe you might turn around and face um, who's chasing you or what is chasing you and maybe ask a question. Why are you chasing me? Who are you? What do you symbolize? Um, you might choose to make friends with that, um, with the thing that's chasing you. So what's the most empowering thing that you can do when you go back into the dream? And that's how we reframe it. A lot of times when people talk to me about their nightmares, they start to talk to me about, um, closing off, right? So someone's chasing me or something's happening that feels threatening and feels frightening and they choose to close off. Um, so either they put all, ask for all kinds of protection um, or they put themselves in a bubble or they wake themselves up. And so, you know, just ask yourself in waking life when I feel afraid and I choose to close off or not engage, what are the results in my life? Would I have different results in my life if when I feel afraid of something, I turn toward it and ask it, ask the fear, what is available here? What's the most empowering choice? Why are you coming to me? Who are you? What do you represent? So just a little, nothing bad can happen to you in your dreams, by the way. So that's just a little push and a nudge to not close yourself off in fearful situations. Don't, um, if, if you feel like that's okay with you and that's in alignment with you, experiment with not waking yourself up or closing yourself off, but making a more empowered choice. Um, because it's in those empowered choices that we begin to get the results that we want in our life. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Remember the three steps are to name it, to claim it, and to reframe it. And that's really where the alchemy is in the reframe, right? So when you reframe it and you go back into the dream and you decide where in the dream you're going to, to show back up, and then you decide what it is that you're going to do, really ask yourself, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel in this dream? And and find that in your body. Make it an embodied experience, a felt experience. Do you want to feel empowered? Do you want to feel, um, do you want to feel, let's see, there's all kinds of ways that you could feel. Do you want to feel free? Do you want to feel liberated? Do you want to feel confident, sexy, um, magical, whole, uh, grateful? Do you want to feel um, honored? How do you want to feel? And really get that felt sense. 
And what are the things that you need to do when you go back into that dream in order to feel that way? So I went back into the game and I wanted to feel a sense of knowing. And when I say knowing, I really mean that magical knowing. You know what I mean? That knowing that comes from source that maybe doesn't make sense to a whole lot of people, but, um, and, and maybe you can't even trace the lines about how you got there, but it's just that sense of, of knowing. And that's how I wanted to feel. And so I began to take actions based on wanting to feel that way. So really feel that in your body, understand what the felt sense is that you want. Um, and then treat that feeling like a sacred totem. That's the alchemy. So you get to walk away from this dream with that feeling, with that quality, that felt, felt sense, that alchemy that you've done. And you know what empowerment or liberation or freedom or magic or wholeness or knowing feels like. And so the next time you get into a situation that feels similar to the one in the dream, fear shows up or um, something around your self-worth or something around not being able to figure something out, any of those things, then you tap into that totem of knowing that felt sense quality or a freedom or of liberation, whatever it is. And you have now, you have this magical elixir that will um, help you in all of these moments where you feel this way. So I hope this has been super helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I am super happy to answer your questions about dream work, about shadow work, about how to remember your dreams, about how to bridge your waking life and your dream life, your sleeping dream life, any of those questions, bridge your conscious with your subconscious. Happy, happy, happy to answer them. Um, all right, so. I want to tell you how you can work with me if that's something that you feel would be um, uh, something you'd like to do, something you feel particularly interested in. So first of all, I want to let you know that I have a Facebook group and you're welcome in there. The Facebook group is called The Wild Feminine and Her Big Juicy Dreams. Uh, so if that resonates with you, I'd love to have you in that Facebook group and I'll write that down in the comments um, below, uh, when I get off so that you can uh, find that link and join that Facebook group. So the second thing I want to talk to you about, I'm doing a virtual retreat. Um, and the virtual retreat is going to be about reclaiming our wisdom. And we're going to actually go through this process. There's going to be other things involved in the virtual retreat, but we are going to go through this process of working with your shadow using dream work um, in this virtual retreat. So this is going to be Saturday, February 29th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time. So it's five hours in sacred circle. And like I said, we're going to be reclaiming our inner wisdom, um, reclaiming our wisdom and our inner knowing um, and our lost power through dream work. And we're going to be doing a lot of this shadow work that, that, that I've been talking to you about. So we'll, we'll start off with doing a basic intro into dream work, including how to be in relationship with your dreams and how to be in relationship with other people's dreams, which is super important. Like I said, we'll go through the shadow work experience. Well, you, 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 you know, knowing it, um, I call it Google knowing it, right? Like anybody can Google how to do shadow work, doing dream work, and you'll probably find several different articles. It's an entirely different thing to go through the experience of it and to, um, to process that transformation and that alchemy for yourself. Plus we get to do it in sacred space. We get to do it with loving witnesses all around, which is so healing in and of itself. Um, we're absolutely going to integrate our power, integrate the alchemy um, so that we walk away embodying our power through this integration process born from your dream work. And then I'm going to offer you some magical questions that you can ask your dreams to help you go deeper into your dream work. So that is the virtual retreat that I'm offering. Um, it's called Reclaiming Our Wisdom. Uh, right after that, I'm going to be having a group program um, for dream work for witches and wild women. So if that's something that interests you, just reach out to me and I'll talk to you about that. Um, so with the, with the virtual retreat though, that comes first, that's on February 29th. Um, the, uh, regular price for that is 197. I'm offering this group of empaths and intuitives 
a special um, pricing bonus if you sign up by by midnight on Friday and so it's going to be $97. So the uh, regular price is $197 and if you in this particular group sign up before Friday at midnight I'm giving you a pricing bonus of $97. So if this is uh, something that you want to talk to me about, just drop a comment. You can reach out to me directly as well through private message. I'd be happy to talk to you about more details uh, for this program. Thank you, everybody, for hopping on, for watching live. I really appreciate you being here. For those of you who are watching later, um, the replay, thank you so much. Please feel free to comment anything in the comments. I'm happy to help. And like I said, if you want to uh, follow me, you can follow me in my Facebook group, which is The Wild Feminine and Her Big Juicy Dreams. You can also fo follow my personal page if you want to send me a friend request. And then I also have a business page uh, by the same name. Thanks, everybody. And I want to say a special, special, special thank you to Marley for having me in the group and letting me share all of this magical dream work with you. I adore Marley. I think she's phenomenal and I love, love, love this group. Um, and I'm so excited that she's got so many people in this group who have su such amazing gifts to offer each other. Um, and I look forward to watching uh, all of the Facebook lives in here. Marley, thank you for having me. And um, all right, everybody, sweet dreams.